everybody, and welcome back. This is it, episode 20 of Orthodox Review. And uh, today, uh, we're going to have some special stuff uh, for you, not the least of which is going to be a giveaway, so stay tuned to the end of the episode to hear all about that. But for now, let's get into the book. What we have here is the newly republished Manual of Eastern Orthodox Prayers. Uh, this version was published this year by St. Vladimir Seminary Press and is a reproduction of the SVS printing from 1983, which uh, it is a <laughs> uh, business card from my church. Oh, there you go. Anyway, uh, <laughs> and it is a direct reproduction of that printing just in hardcover format. Um, it's pretty sturdy. Um, Nice and tight, but uh, you can tell from the binding, actually, that I think what they did was just print the soft cover as usual and add a extra glued binding to it. It's going to hold up well, no matter what. It's, it's, it's a handsome little addition and uh, will serve you well for generations. Now, that being said, let's get into the history of this book, because... Um, I had a lot of fun research, researching this uh, this edition uh, because all I knew of it was that it was originally published in 1983 by the SVS with a forward by uh, Alexander Schmemann. What I didn't know and was gleefully happy to find out was that it was originally translated in 1943 in England. It's the product of the Fellowship of St. Sergius and Alban, sorry, the other way around, St. Alban and Sergius in England, which I, I really should do uh, an episode on that alone, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a link down below to their about page, because, wow, what a... Uh, we're, okay, so the truncated version of that is they are a group, uh, they started off as kind of a discussion group between uh, Russian Orthodox who um, had fled to England after the Bolshevik Revolution and uh, the local um, uh, Episcopalians, uh, or, uh, Anglicans in England. And uh, it was a way for the two to kind of begin a dialogue. And so um, the fellowship was started by um, Nicholas uh, Zernov, who was a a young, uh, a young student uh, who was a refugee, and things kind of sprung from there. So uh, around 1943, they decided to create this translation. Uh, now, the translators were the Reverend uh, C.P.L. Dennis, uh, Miss Margaret Dampier, the Reverend Alex uh, van der Mansbra, Reverend John Finlow, Miss Irene Finlow, and uh, Miss, uh, Miss Grace uh, Keeble, um, was uh, was in charge of the manuscript. Nicholas Zernov was the editor. Um, and the forward for the later version was written by Father Alexander uh, Schmemann. Now, what's interesting about the translation, and let's, uh, let's start digging into this quick. Uh, by the way, the explanatory notes in here are fantastic, and uh, they were written by Nicholas, um, and kind of gives you a rough rough idea of what they were aiming for. Um, the uh, the, uh, the book itself is uh, similar to the Little Red book in scope. Uh, there's a few variations in the prayers. Um, and uh, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. But there are a few, um, a few prayers that, that, that you won't find in more recently covered books. And we're going to go through a couple of those real quick and then I'll share with you a little bit about the translation proper. Uh, first I want to go to page 15 and uh, prayers for children you don't find in uh, in too many of the more mainline Orthodox translations and, and by that I mean uh, translations that were done either by a monastery or a particular archdiocese this this was independent a lot like the uh, Svit prayer book we discussed earlier in that uh, it was it was done by the layman under the auspices of clergy and then approved for church use um, on page 20 in the prayers of Thanksgiving um, 
we have not only uh, this is one of the earliest that I've uh, seen of the prayer of Metropolitan Philaret, um, but there are quite a few prayers of thanksgiving before you get into any other prayers. So that, that's a nice little addition. And then 22. I love this. Prayers for the eradication of, I'm sorry, prayers for the increase of love and the eradication of anger. And that one is one that I am, I'm hoping to, <laughs> hoping to stick to it and add it to my prayer rule, because I think that's something we can all benefit from. Uh, prayers for the beginning of a journey, which usually, uh, um, you know, you would get a blessing from, from your local priest or whoever, but you know, if you're just leaving, you know, there's a prayer here for you. And, uh, let's see, page 26, I have, uh, the prayers here for the departed and the departure of a soul, uh, which is great because, um, you know, if there's no priest around and you're, uh, let's say you're in the hospital or, you know, there's been some sort of tragic accident and you might be like me where you keep a prayer book with you at all times. And this'll, this'll kind of give you what you need to begin to pray uh, for that person's soul. Um, now the translation proper is best described as I'm, I'm not going to call it Victorian English, but it was, you know what, let's call it late Victorian to early modern um, because of the time of the translation and who the translators are. It's, it's very, uh, it sounds Anglican um, in, in the colloquial sense, um, but is not by any means a, um, a, like, a push towards Victorian translation. Now, like many other prayer books published before the 1960s, let's say, there is no Greek or Russian text in this book. It's all Anglicanized. Uh, that means you will not see terms like Theotokos. You will just see uh, birth giver of God, mother of God, things like that. Um, and again, it just goes to show that back in the day, People were more interested in praying in their their tongue than they were in learning deep <laughs> deep coiny Greek terms for things that could easily be spoken in English. Um, I love how they have the uh, the readings uh, that go with uh, with certain certain feast days. Here we have the Ascension, right? Thursday of the Ascension. So you have the Treparian and Katakian, and then you have the readings. And I think that's fantastic. Why don't more prayer books have this? I don't know. But I think there's a lovely uh, addition to any prayer book, is to just have those couple extra lines in there. Um, of course, these days, everyone has a liturgical calendar, this yada, yada, yada. Or, you know, maybe you're your Bible has a lectionary in it, but, you know, for dopey, uh, uneducated folks like me, this is, this is definitely useful. I, I will say that I, I haven't really broken it in yet, it's kind of stiff, but, uh, fantastic translation, beautifully made, um, and really a great, a lot like the Svit and the Hapgood and Nasser translations, which we'll be getting into eventually, uh, this is a great example of early English translation of Orthodox services and prayers and uh, kind of shows you where all of our modern books come from. And this one, I would have to say, uh, even though it was posted, uh, it was uh, translated around wartime, uh, like so many of the newer of the old school were, uh, is great. It's kind of all-encompassing. It's uh, not too little, not too much. And for the price of, it's going to flash on the screen because I can't think of it off the top of my head. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a great book. I think I got this one on sale for, it was 40% off and then shipping. Came to 50, I think it's about $15, $20. Anyway, um, yeah, so of course there'll be a link down below uh, to buy this. 
Uh, you can get it directly through St. Vlad's, or you can choose to support Hermitage of the Holy Cross by buying it through them, or you can find it on Amazon. At any rate, um, that's all I have for this. Now, again, I'm going to ask you, please check out the links below, because I, I would really like for everyone to take a look at the history of uh, the Fellowship of St. Alban and St. Sergius, because it really, I, I think it's, it's a beautiful society and uh, goes a long way to... Um, maintaining communication between um, Christians in, uh, in Western Europe. Um, at any rate, um, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, so let's talk about the giveaway. Let's set this aside for a moment. My next episode will be on this beauty. This is St. John Chrysostom and the Jesus Prayer, published by New Rome Press. I'm not even going to crack the cover on this. I'm just going to leave it here and tell you this. This is the subject of the next episode, and this book can be yours. All you have to do is like the video and comment about wanting the book. And then what I'm going to do is, at the beginning of the next episode, I'm going to randomly choose, through the use of polyhedral dice... <laughs> Uh, who the winner is. And then once I'm done recording the review, it'll be mailed to you, so you might get it before you even know you won. Uh, no, I'm going to have to let you know you won because we're going to have to exchange information, yada, yada, yada. So, if you want a chance to get your hands on a copy of this for free, just tune in to the next episode to see if you won. So please, like, share, subscribe. Comment below if you want to be entered into the contest. And... We will announce the winner at the beginning of the next episode when we review this uh, the book. Well, okay. Well, Spooky Cat's crying, so that means it's time for me to say my goodbyes here. Thank you again all so much for, uh, for checking out my videos and listening to my inane, uneducated ramblings. Um, I hope you all have a blessed Feast of the Nativity if you're on the new calendar. I'm sure I'll see you before then, but as always, please go to church, say your prayers, and remember God. God bless.